From Crunch Econometrics, thank you for joining me in the continuation of our series on ARDL models. Today we are considering general to specific approach in EVOS. General to specific approach, we are simply here to look at how to modify an overparameterized model to a parsimonious model. What do we imply by an overparameterized model? This is a model having too many lags of a variable, or a model with too many regressors, or a model with too many regressors and their respective lags. So what will be the consequences of such a model upon estimation? You are likely to have many insignificant coefficients due to multicollinearity of the regressors. So how can it be corrected? Rather than removing those variables arbitrarily, it is important to subject them to scientific testing. You can use either the wall test or the likelihood ratio test. So what is the wall test all about? The wall test for coefficient significance null hypothesis is that these coefficients are equal to zero against the alternative that the coefficients are not equal to zero. And if a coefficient is equal to zero, it simply means it is not relevant being in the model. So what will be your rejection criteria? You reject the null hypothesis if the prop value of the F statistic is lower or equal to 0.05. The second test is the likelihood ratio test for redundant variables. The null hypothesis in this case is that the variables are redundant against the alternative that the null hypothesis is not true. So what is the decision criteria? You reject the null hypothesis if the value of the adjusted R squared from the parsimonious model is lower than that from the overparameterized model. So you can see that in the wall test, the F statistic will inform your decision. The prop value of the F statistic will inform your decision. Unlike the likelihood ratio test, where the value of the adjusted R squared will inform your decision. So having given you all these preambles, let us now go over to eViews to work out an example. Let me pause here by saying before you watch this video, make sure you have watched the previous videos on ARDL because I'm still using the same variables and the link to this variable, I have included it in the description for this video. Here are the three variables, the log of manufacturing output, the log of import, and the real exchange rate. The data span is from 1981 to 2014, that's 34 years. But in this example, I will only be using the log of import as the dependent variable, while the log of manufacturing value added and the real exchange rate will be the regressors. So let us quickly go on to quick, click on estimate equation, and here I list out the variables. Other methods, I change it to ARDL. In this dialog box, I leave the dependent variable and the regressors maximum lags at 4, the way they are. And I come to this place, train specification, I select model 3. Model 3 is unrestricted constant and no trend. You can see here the method is still ARDL. My sample size is as shown. I click OK. So on the screen, I have the results from the overparameterized model. And the way eViews does it, each of these coefficients are serially numbered. The first coefficient, which is the lag of the log of import, takes number one. The second lag, the coefficient of the second lag of import, takes number two. And the serial numbering goes on to constant, which takes number 15. Because I have 15 coefficients on this, uh, as you can see. You can also see their respective standard errors, the t statistics, and their probability values. I mentioned in one of my previous uh, videos that the t statistics will make no sense or will have no relevance without the applicable probability value. In other words, it is the p value that gives relevance or statistical significance to the t statistic. And from what we can see here, out of the 15 coefficients, eight are not statistically significant. I'm not counting the constants. I'm only limiting it to the regressors. So I'm having eight coefficients of the regressors not being significant. And out of 15 coefficients in total, that is 53%. 53% is way too high, and that is not acceptable. So I have to do something to this model. So I begin by subjecting it to the wall test.
But before I go to the war test, I need to show you that indeed eViews attaches serial numbering to these coefficients. I go to view, I click on representations, and here you can see C6 here. This is the coefficient for the first lag of MVA. You can see C10 here is the coefficient for the level of real exchange rate, and you can see C15 is the coefficient of the intercept. Let me conduct the wall test. Coefficient diagnostics, I select wall test. Those are the selected coefficients. Make sure you pick the correct one. So I click OK. On the screen is the result of the wall test. And we can see the probability value at 0 0.81. This is clearly above 0 0.05. And in this case, we cannot reject the null hypothesis that these coefficients are indeed equal to 0. So I have to re-estimate that model without these five variables and let us see how the coefficients will turn out to be. So I copy out the entire equation. I click on representation. Then I highlight all this. I copy it. I click on estimate. I paste. Under methods, I change it to least squares. Remember I said that uh, ARDL is being estimated by the OLS technique. So this is the entire uh, equation. So here I begin to remove those coefficients that are indeed equal to zero. So one of such is the second lag of the log of imports. I remove that. That is C2. Be careful to know what you are removing. If you are not sure, you can easily confirm from what you have highlighted up here. Again, I'm going to remove C6, C7, and C8. So I'm removing C6, C7, and C8. These are the first, second, and third lags of log of manufacturing outputs. So here they are. I'm removing C11. C11 is the first lag of real exchange rate. So having removed those variables, I'm clicking OK. So what you are seeing on the screen now is the result of the parsimonious model. It is now a parsimonious model because I have removed those variables whose uh, coefficients are equal to zero. You can see that this looks better. All of them are statistically relevant and significant except the level of real exchange rate, which is still at 0.422. So I think I'm okay with this model and I'll just leave it the way it is. All these coefficients are significant except the level of real exchange rate. This is okay. So now let us test using the likelihood ratio test. I click on quick, estimate equation. I list out the equations again. I'm starting all over. I change it to real deal. Again, I don't change anything except here where I modify to model three. And I click OK. You can see the output of the over parameterized model. Here we want to conduct a likelihood ratio test to test for the redundancy of variables in this model. As you can see, just like I explained earlier on, eight of them are statistically not significant. So we need to test their relevance in the model. For the likelihood ratio test, our decision is based on the outcome of the adjusted R squared. In this case, the R squared for the overparameterized model is 0.6625. So after conducting the likelihood ratio test, I have to compare the outcome of the parsimonious model with this, with this um, over-parameterized model. So let's go to view. Coefficient diagnostics, I select redundant variables test. Variables are here, make sure you copy them correctly so that you don't begin to test a wrong variable. I click OK. The result from the redundant variables test, as you can see on your screen, our F value, look at the pro value of the F statistic, is exactly what we obtained under the wall test. Let's scroll down a bit. You can also see the outcome of the parsimonious model is exactly what we obtained before under the wall test, where all the variables are statistically significant except the level of the real exchange rate. But know that under the likelihood ratio test, it is the adjusted R squared that informs our decision. And what is the null hypothesis? The null hypothesis is that the variables are redundant against the alternative that they are not redundant. 
and you can only reject the null hypothesis if the value of the adjusted R squared from the parsimonious model is lower than the overparameterized model. So if the value of the adjusted R squared is not lower, then you cannot reject the null. In this case, the value of the adjusted R squared is higher than what we have in the overparameterized model. In this case, we cannot reject the null hypothesis that those variables are indeed redundant. So at the end of the day, we are going to settle for this parsimonious model. This is much better than what we had before. So if you have a situation whereby you did a regression and most of your variables are not statistically significant, begin to subject them to either the wall test or the likelihood ratio test whereby you test for the significance of the coefficients or the relevance of the variables. Don't just start removing the variables arbitrarily from the model because they are not significant. You have to test them scientifically. I hope this tutorial has been helpful. Thank you for stopping by. Subscribe for more videos from Crunch Econometrics. Leave us your comments and suggestions on how to improve the quality of our tutorials.